Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. Emmanuel is here. Your Savior is here. Your healer is here. God with us. He will touch your life. He will turn your life around. Every sickness, every problem, infirmity in your life tonight is that night. You'll take it away in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you and bless your name. Great God, mighty God, gracious and glorious. We're asking, O oh Lord, you come in your mighty power, touch every life, turn every life around, and work miracles in every life tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that here and everywhere, nobody will go empty handed. And it will be well with every soul in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming again. We're lifting up Emmanuel. We're believing in Emmanuel. And we're being transformed by Emmanuel, God with us. This December, a GCK as well as a retreat focus on Emmanuel. Tonight, I'm talking on Emmanuel, the merciful God of all grace. Emmanuel, the merciful God of all grace in matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name jesus somebody shout that name for me jesus. for he shall save his people from their sins christ has come his name is jesus he didn't come to pet sinners to encourage sinners in their sins, to tolerate sin in his kingdom, he came so that he will save, he will rescue, he'll put stop to every sin in every life. He'll do that in your life in Jesus' name. He came to save, he came to rescue, he came to set free from sin. And if sin dominates your life, if sin overpowers your life, if sin overwhelms your life, welcome. The Lord will save you tonight. It will touch your life tonight. And the Lord in his power, in his mercy and compassion, he'll give you that salvation from sin. It will set you free. It will set me free. He will set me free. Then in verse 22, it tells us, Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Verse 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be a child. A virgin shall be a child. You may have, uh, you know, a Bible there that says a woman shall be a child. There's nothing unique in that. There's nothing special in that. There's nothing miraculous in that. A woman shall be a child. You see, there are people that uh, do not believe in the miracle of the virgin Birth, but the Holy Ghost wants us to understand, and the angel of God wants us to understand, heaven wants us to understand that Jesus was born of Virgin Mary. No connection with man, no intercourse with man, but the power of the Holy Ghost overshadowed her, overwhelmed her, and it says, Behold, a virgin shall be a child and shall bring forth a son. And and thou shalt call his name, somebody tell me, Emmanuel, which means interpreted God with us. Jesus, the Son of God, is God. 
and he comes to be with us he comes to dwell with us and when he's with us it's with us as savior it's with us as healer it's with us as deliverer it's with us as the creator it's with us as sanctifier it's with us as the power of god in man and everything you need from heaven everything you need from god He'll do it for you tonight because he is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Emmanuel, the merciful God of all grace. We're looking at three things before we pray. Number one, we're looking at the merciful God with grace for all. Grace for you. Grace for me. Grace for her. Grace for everyone. The merciful God. The compassionate God. The good God. And the God that is not partial. Is the merciful God with grace for all. Number two. Is the manifold is manifold grace and goodness for the afflicted. Any affliction? upon a sinner upon a saint upon a believer upon anyone that has come today all your afflictions will be taken away my afflictions are gone i said my afflictions are gone miracle healing coming upon your life miracle deliverance coming upon your life because we have the manifold grace and goodness for everyone that is afflicted number three is the manifested grace of god the almighty the manifested grace of god from the almighty is the almighty is the all-sufficient is the all-powerful and because his power knows no limit he comes to you tonight and at the mention of the name of jesus your problems are solved my problems are solved be it confirmed in your life in jesus name number one is the merciful god with grace for all we're looking at john chapter 1 verse 16 john chapter 1 verse 16 and of his fullness have we all received notice that word all anyone may come if you have not received it's because you have not come the moment you come and you come to the lord tonight you receive of the fullness of god i will receive I said I will receive when you know from the depth of your heart, from the bottom of your heart, that God is not partial to his fullness, and we all receive, which means you there, you there, everyone, everywhere, everyone, without any exception, the, the, the vilest of sinners, the greatest of sinners, and the most terrible person on earth, when you come, he says he will not cast out anyone because of his fullness and the fullness is that the ocean is like the water in the ocean in the sea is so full that you can come I can come and there's still room for one there is room for all because of his fullness have we all received grace for grace he tells us in verse 17 he says in verse 17 for the law was given by moses but grace and truth grace and truth grace based on the truth of god grace based on the eternal truth of the almighty god came by jesus christ grace comes to us through jesus christ emmanuel the merciful god emmanuel the compassionate God Emmanuel the mighty God that grace comes and has to come that grace will come into your life tonight a night of grace for you tonight a night of the offer of salvation by grace of healing by grace of the goodness of God by grace tonight is that night in life in your life in Jesus name it says grace and truth came 
by Jesus Christ. It tells us in verse 18, in verse 18 it says, No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son. That's the Son of God, that Jesus, that's Emmanuel, which is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him unto us. The grace of God comes into our lives. He links us up with God, where we reconcile with God and the power of God and the goodness of God and the creative might of God comes into our lives because we're connected to him by grace in Titus chapter 2. Reading from verse 11, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. The grace of God does not bring sin into our lives. Uh -uh. It's because we need to have the grace of God. That's why there was sin in our lives. The grace of God does not bring iniquity into our lives. It's because we didn't have the grace of God. That's why there was iniquity. The grace of God does not bring evil into our lives. It says for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. It will bring that salvation to you today. I said he'll bring the salvation to you today because anytime the grace of God comes, anywhere the grace of God comes, it brings salvation. It brings transformation. It brings a new life. It brings conversion to that life. Tonight is your night. Tonight is my night. The grace of God that brings salvation to all men has appeared unto all men. You see that? It has appeared unto all men. You are not excluded except you exclude yourself. You are not taken away from that grace of God except you take yourself away from the grace of God because it says the grace of God appears with salvation. And it appears unto all men. Look at verse 12. It says in verse 12, teaching us, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust was ungodliness, a character different from the character of God. God is love, man is of hatred. God is holy, man is unholy. God is sinless, man is a sinful and that's ungodliness when there's sin in your life when there's lovelessness in your life when there's hatred in your life when there is transgression in your life when there is untruth deception in your life that's ungodliness and worldly loss but now grace comes and that grace teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss we shall live soberly. A person that has the grace of God will live a sober life, not a frivolous life, not a sinful life, not an evil life, not a fighting, violent life, and not a life that does not bring glory to God. But the grace of God, you know, some people say, grace, grace, grace. And grace makes them, teaches them to sin. Uh-uh, that's not the grace of God. And you don't need grace to sin. Satan does not have grace. He sins. And all the followers, children of Satan, they don't have grace. They sin when grace comes. The reason why grace comes is so that the grace of God and the righteousness of God and the new life will come into you and will teach you that you deny ungodliness and worldly laws which should live soberly, righteously, and godly. Godly was that the life of God in man, the love of God in man, the goodness of God in man, the character of God in man that will live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. It will happen. Your life, it will happen. Your, your neighbors will look at you and they will know that a definite change, transformation has happened in your life. And 
your friends will look at you and uh, you know your same partners we used to do that together we used to do that together but now they say what happened to you you're no more godless you are godly you're no more righteous you're righteous and you're no more free will laws you are sober you say it's the grace of god ah what's that grace of god the grace of god is the transforming power that comes from christ and it turns your life around and now you're looking for look at verse 13 you're not waiting for the coming of the lord you're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ the reason why that change happens is because the savior comes into our lives he says behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and he opens the door of the heart he says i will come in unto him and i will fellowship with him and sup with him and the grace of god it goes further he saves you he forgives you he redeems your life he changes your life he turns your life around you know what he does more look at verse 14 in verse 14 who gave himself for us all of us he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity what he does is that he looks at every nook and uh, corner of your heart and of your life any sin there small or great any sin there common or uncommon any sin there habitual or occasional there's christ Emmanuel, as he comes to us, he redeems us from all iniquity and purify unto himself. Purify unto himself so that now you are with him and he's with you. You are in him and he's in you. And a new life comes and shines forth and reflects everywhere in every area of your life at home in the office the marketplace everywhere that grace of god so comes in your life and now he purifies unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works he'll make you zealous for good works you know before you came to the lord before the grace of god came to your life he was zealous of evil work it was zealous of worldly things and with all your heart all your mind all your thinking in the morning afternoon and evening all you could think about is to do evil is to plan evil and you plan it ahead of time because you didn't have the grace of god but now when you have the grace of god and the grace of god has come has washed you has purged you has cleansed you has transformed your life he now makes you to be zealous of good work that change will come tonight in second corinthians chapter 9 and i'm reading from verse 8 second corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 and god is able to make all grace abound toward you tonight god is able in your life god is able in your situation god is able it says and god is able to make all grace all grace that means every area of your life that needs the touch of grace the transformation by grace it says he is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency you see the grace does not come in trickles and trickles i got grace but still i cannot live right uh -uh. i got grace but i cannot speak right uh -uh. i got grace i cannot live in the truth uh -uh. i got grace but you know it is passion no it says he's able to make this grace always having all sufficiency in all things that may abound to every good work that moment has come for you 
it has come for me and you know one was serious up your hand it's not just an empty thing anybody can stand up anybody can raise up his hand but you are raising up your hand for a purpose you're raising up your hand so that all the dirty past will be cleansed so that all the past sins will be taken away you're saying oh lord i know that your grace is available and that grace is available for me i don't just want a superficial salvation i want the real salvation that comes from heaven i raise up my hand and as i do i believe on the lord jesus christ and i want you to make a change a transformation in my life and tonight is that night you will do it we're looking at Romans chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 23. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 it says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Absence of grace means denial of glory. You cannot have the glory of God in your life. The glory of God cannot shine forth in your life when you are devoid of grace. When you don't have grace, the grace that comes from Emmanuel, from the Lord. When that grace is not there, you cannot have the glory. And all men were born into this world without grace. Were born into this life with without grace it's only when we come to the lord that we have the grace of god but before then if you have not been saved if you have not received jesus as your personal savior if you have not repented if you have not turned away from every form of sin in your life you're a sinner or maybe a backslider and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God then in verse 24 it says being justified freely by his grace we have nothing to pay a debt too heavy and our transgression too deep and all the evil we have done we are condemned and the only way we can come to the Lord and be justified the only way we can come to the Lord and be forgiven the only way we can come to the Lord and have the goodness of God and the conversion of our soul is through the grace of God that's why it says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus and every one can have and you will have tonight i said you will have tonight that the merciful god with grace for all we're looking at number two here number two here uh, number two is manifold grace and goodness for the afflicted you understand affliction when we're sick we're afflicted when we have incurable disease we're afflicted and when we have uh, you know sickness disease um, plague that uh, you know the help we get from the world cannot um, you know cannot take away and we're rolling on the bed and we're suffering and we're saying what kind of life is this the pain is too much and all that's affliction and all the afflictions are taken away tonight in Jesus name affliction in your body taken away in Jesus name affliction in your brain taken away in Jesus name affliction in your blood system taken away in Jesus name in your bone on your knee or your joints anywhere in your body all those afflictions be gone gone the lord will do it for you tonight in jesus name and it's the goodness of the lord that does that goodness of the lord goodness of the lord that does that we're looking at psalm 145 and i'm reading from verse 9 psalm 145 we're looking at verse 9 the lord is good to all can you say that are you part of that all it'll be good to you tonight 
He'll take that sickness away tonight. He'll take that affliction to away from you tonight. And when you hear the name of Jesus at the mention of the name of Jesus, all the plague, all the disease, all the sickness, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. And look at that again. It says the Lord is good yes it was good to israel but today is good to the people of god and to everyone that will come it'll be good in the future at the millennial reign there'll be peace all over and there'll not be sickness but even now today not only was not only will be but today the lord is good to all thank god is good to me i say thank god is good to me if it's good to you, he'll take sickness away. If it's good to you, that cancer will not continue. If it's good to you, that infirmity will not continue your life in Jesus' name. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Look at that. All his creatures, you are there tonight. God created you. Although you are sick, although you are afflicted, although you are traumatized, although you are troubled, the Lord's mercies, they are over all his creatures. We're looking at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10. Verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Look at that double anointing. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the third personality, third person in the Trinity. And as God the Father is creator, the Holy Ghost is creator. As God the Father is healer, the Holy Ghost is healer. As God the Father has all power and nothing will be impossible for him, the Holy Ghost also has all power and nothing will be impossible for him and Jesus was anointed overshadowed overwhelmed and enveloped by the Holy Ghost and with power and the power that is the power that heals every sickness the power that strengthens all the weak and if you are weak here today you can't you couldn't rise up you couldn't walk you couldn't bend or whatever and if you run a little you'll be it's like you want to lose your breath there's power strength here tonight the lord will revive you because it says how god anointed Jesus, that's a Emmanuel of Nazareth, and with the Holy Ghost, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all. How many people? I said, How many people? Do you really believe that? If you believe that, say that word all very well. Healing all. And we remember Jesus when he was here on earth, he healed all that came to him. He never sent anyone away. He never said, that's too serious. He never said, how did you get that? He never said, this is disturbing. Everyone that came, he healed them all. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever and because he's still the same he has not changed he healed all he'll heal you today you open blind eyes those years gone by he'll open your blind eyes he, he removed all the internal bleeding all the internal sicknesses he'll do it for you today he cleansed the lepers it will do it for you today. He even raise the dead. And if any part of your body, any part of your brain, any part on the inside is dead and not functioning, revival, renewal, resurrection will come to every part of your body today in Jesus' name. It says, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Is God your oppressor? Who is your oppressor? You know some people, when they have oppression, 
or depression or distress, whatever, they say, God, <laughs> thy will be done. Is suppression the will of God in your life? No. Suffering the will of God in your life? No. Affliction the will of God in your life? No. Barrenness the will of God in your life? No. Sadness and sorrow, suffering the will of God in your life? It's the devil. It says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come. Christ has come. I am come. Emmanuel has come. I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Abundant life coming to you tonight. <laughs> Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. God was with him look at mark chapter 7 reading from verse 37 there mark chapter 7 verse 37 and they were beyond measure astonished beyond measure as they looked at him what he did as they looked at him how he cured those that were incurable and they looked at him and they saw what he had done and they heard the testimony of what he was doing it says they were beyond measure as Tony saying he has done all things well in your life tonight he will do all things well on that child you are concerned you are bothered about he will do all things well on your progress in life things are going to change you come to the new year and now he will do all things well as to having whatever so you can have your daily meal and you can pay all your all your debts he will do all things well inside outside everywhere every part of your life every part of your body you will do all things well am i talking to anybody there it will happen they said he has done all things well he make it both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak why does he do that sometimes you know somebody says i've not um, been saved and yet god healed me i've not repented and yet god healed me i've not been a nice fellow and yet god healed me why does he do that he does that look at romans chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 4 romans chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 4 it says or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leadeth thee to repentance the goodness of god the healing of god the miracle of god the mercy of god the compassion of god the goodness of god leadeth thee to repentance you know if you have not repented and god heals you that means god is inviting you and god is drawing you with that healing if you have not repented and god delivers you that means god God is drawing you and God is saying if I could do that for you as a sinner do you know how much I can do for you as a real child of God don't you know the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance and so don't you the miracle to substitute for the repentance I've got the healing already and uh, you know the JCK have been a blessing to me I've got you my deliverance already the JCK has done something marvelous in my life don't stop there the goodness of God the healing of God the deliverance of God the miracle of God the manifestation of his power in your life leadeth thee to repentance and when we give you the chance tonight and will say you want to repent and turn your life over unto Christ so that his goodness will work more and more in your life you'll be the first person to say yes I am here I have got the goodness of God has kept me alive and look at this year what is done for me I realize now that that goodness of God leads me invites me 
and calls me to repentance. We're coming to number three now. Number three, we're looking at the manifested grace of God the Almighty. The manifested grace of God the Almighty. He manifests the grace. He shines forth the grace. He splashes and puts the grace of God upon us in manifestation. And he does that as the Almighty. We're looking at uh, Acts chapter 11, reading from verse 23. Acts 11, we're looking at verse 23. Who when he came and he had seen the grace of God. He had seen the grace of God. Here we're talking about, uh, we we're talking about Barnabas, and uh, it says he came to Antioch and he saw the people. They were Gentiles, they were idol worshippers, they were Gentiles, they were, you know, wicked people, notorious people, they were Gentiles, they were evil, transgressing people. And now it says when he came to them, he saw the grace of God. They were fighting before. If they are still fighting, there's no grace of God there. He wouldn't see grace of God. They were stealing before. If they were still stealing after so-called salvation, he'll not see the grace of God there. And they were, you know, hateful people before, hating one another and blackmailing one another and hindering the progress of one another in the past. If they were still doing in that if they were still hateful it was still angry if they were still wicked it will not see the grace of God the grace of God brings a change the grace of God brings a transformation the grace of God brings renewal of life and that renewal will come to you right now you know if they were still like you know they were uh, sick and uh, anemic and being carried in wheelchair uh, one is blind the other one is lame the other one has cancer and all and that's what they had had before before the goodness of God came if they were still like that he would not have seen the grace and the goodness of God but he saw we will see the grace of God in your life well, we'll see the goodness of God in your life. The change, the transformation, so clear, so visible that the life you were living before, you are no more living that life. The lies you were telling before, you're no more telling those lies. The deception you were carrying about before, you don't carry that about anymore. We we'll see the change. And when we see the change, we we'll see the grace of God, the goodness who, when He came came he had seen and had seen the grace of God he was glad he was glad yeah as a pastor of course he'll be glad when he saw the transformation of life there's no pastor that will be glad Barnabas he comes to the people he's been preaching to them maybe for how many years now and the same anger of 10 years ago is still there who will be glad about that and the same stealing of uh, five years ago is still there yeah, we'll be glad about that the adultery and the fornication of uh, seven years ago is still there and he has a pack of a church of members that are here and there worldly and evil and sinful and satanic who will be glad about that but when this Barnabas came to them and he saw their lives he saw their relationships he saw their interaction and he saw the love of God in them and he saw the change and transformation who when he came and had seen the grace of God he was glad and he exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they will cleave unto the Lord after we come to know the Lord after we are converted after we are changed after we are saved, after our sins are forgiven, we don't go back to the jungle of sinfulness again. We cleave unto the Lord and we continue with the Lord. After you raise up your hand and you say, yes, I give myself, my soul, my spirit, my totality, I give myself unto the Lord and Jesus comes to you and he forgives you and he turns your life around. You don't go back to the gang 
anymore. You don't go back to the hard drugs anymore because you now cleave unto the Lord. You abide and remain in the Lord. You don't go to the same partner anymore. The partner in adultery. The partner in fornication. You don't go back to that anymore. You stay with the Lord and you cleave unto the Lord. You don't go back to the people you are, you know, who are robbing others and you are part of that, uh, you know, gang before. Now you are saved and now you are born again. A new life has now come and you carry the grace of God everywhere you go and your neighbors will see the grace of God and church members will see the grace of God and your friends and even your foes, your enemies, they will see the grace of God. They will see a change has come. A transformation has come. A new life has come. Who when he came and he had seen the grace of God, he was glad and exhorted them all, all, all. He exhorted them all that were purpose of heart. They were cleaver unto the Lord. And I pray that this change will come in your life in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now a believer, when you become a believer, you become a believer now, today, because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved and you are born again and your life comes fresh and new then as a believer now saved now forgiven now set free now turned around as a believer you will not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness look at verse 15 in verse 15 and what concord has christ with belial you don't worship idols anymore whatever the name belial or whatever and he says or what part i see that believeth with an infidel you know the infidels are those who don't even believe there is god and because they are infidels they don't believe there's any judgment on the final day they just say they die they die like an animal and they are forgotten and totally buried or they are cremated they are burnt and then the ashes are collected into a bottle and they don't make anything of life after death those are infidels but now you're a believer you're a real child of god you knows you know that he watches over you and he watches you he sees your life and every evil sin that people do will be brought in judgment on the final day infidels do not believe that but he says what part as he that believeth with an infidel verse 16 in verse 16 and what agreement has the temple of God with idols now when you give your life to the Lord whether you've done it before you are doing it tonight you don't have any participation in idol worship anymore for ye at the temple of the living god as god has said i will dwell in them and walk in them i will be their god and they shall be my people verse 17 in verse 17 wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate says the lord those are the real people who are saved they raise up their hand go beyond that they believe in their heart go beyond that now you are separated from the sins of the world and from the sinners in the world you're not drinking the alcohol with them anymore you're not smoking their cigarettes with them anymore you're not running their errands for them anymore because it says you come out from among them and be ye separate says the lord and touch not the unclean thing nothing unclean will come to your life anymore will come into your body anymore 
will come out of your mouth anymore will come through your eyes anymore because now you say touch not the unclean, unclean thing and I will receive you I will receive you make up your mind I want this Emmanuel and the grace of Emmanuel and the goodness of Emmanuel to come in my life and because of that I separate from evil I repent I turn away from everything that is evil and then that grace will continue to walk in your life I said that grace will continue to walk in your life are you there I said are you there you are receiving the grace of God tonight in Jesus name and those of us already were born again those of us already were children of God and we will see this height that he wants us to achieve we will see this level that he wants us to be how will that happen we're saved by grace and we are strengthened by grace and we are uplifted by grace it tells us in first corinthians chapter 15 i'm reading there from verse 10 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 for by the grace of god i am what i am saved i am what i am by grace i'm serving now i am what i am by the grace of god sanctified i am what i am by the grace of god victorious i am what i am by the grace of god we don't leave the grace of god back there at the point of salvation we get saved by grace and then the strength we need the righteousness we need the power we need and the strength of the soul of the spirit that we need it is still the grace of god and so don't say well this is crusade and because this crusade is only for those who are receiving the grace of god for the first time paul the apostle said that you can say by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain grace not in vain if somebody who says i've been a sinner and yet i got the grace of god and then he still continues in the sin the grace of god is in vain if somebody is a timid and weak and cannot receive temptation and is still going on in the habitual sinfulness that's not fellows save the grace of god in vain but when you're saved and then you move on you're sanctified you're purified you're made holy and then you're serving the lord with all spirit strength and purpose of mind then you can say like Paul the Apostle it's grace that was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all yet not I but the grace of God which was given which was with me and that grace and abundance will come to your life tonight will turn your life around and you'll never be the same again in jesus name it's not by struggling it's not by personal effort it's not by rolling on the ground it's not by crying it's not by anything it's by asking for the grace of god and of his fullness that we all received grace for grace grace after grace grace upon grace for moses brought the law but grace and truth came by the lord jesus christ in hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 28 it says wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace you see that we're receiving a kingdom he's bringing us into the kingdom of god you're born again you enter into the kingdom and you are sanctified you enter deeper into the kingdom you're serving the lord you enter more and more into the privilege of service in the kingdom and 
let us have grace we need grace grace at the beginning grace in continuity and grace at the consummation let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear that grace available today and the goodness of god is available today the grace coming to your life now will have all your sins forgiven amen, amen. amen. and the grace and the goodness of god coming to your life tonight will give you total healing amen. total deliverance affliction no more in jesus name it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed you see the salvation the bible talks about is a salvation that brings new life guilt is gone condemnation is gone and the weakness of the human nature it's gone that now he gives you the grace for salvation the grace for strength and the grace to live in newness of life where are you it's about the nice clothes you raise up your hand you say yes that's the grace i want the grace of god that bringeth salvation is appearing to you now and he wants you to receive he doesn't want you to reject the grace of god the grace of god and it comes free it comes free when you ask for it with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and when you say that's the grace i want i don't want you to just raise up my hand and then i remain the same a sinner as ever but a change that comes by the strength of the lord by the power of the lord by the goodness of the lord he died for you on the cross of calvary so that whosoever shall call upon his name in repentance will be saved wherever you are you can raise up your hand for that grace of god that he will give unto you now raise up your hand God bless you there. God bless you there. Grace of God that will not be in vain. Grace of God that will bring victory into your life. Grace of God that will bring transformational salvation. Transformational trans uh, salvation into your life. Where are you? Raise up that hand. He'll do it now. You're not the one to save yourself. You're not the one to say, I'll keep trying. I keep trying. No, it's not trying. It is trusting you trust the lord and you raise up that hand saying i believe tonight is the night of my salvation real salvation victorious salvation transformational salvation triumphant salvation tell the lord as you are raising up your hand now you can stand up and you can say lord i am here this is real salvation and this is what i want where are you where are you you've been falling and rising now you can rise up and say lord i want a salvation that will keep me steadfast and heaven will be glad about the entrance of grace into my life where are you where are you you raise up your hand you stand up and you say yes lord that's the salvation i need yes lord transformational salvation he will do it is the one to do it you do it in your heart you'll do it in your life and then heaven will be glad because you turned away from sin and you came unto the lord as you are standing tell the lord over here at the alpha location and over there anywhere you are this is salvation transformational this is salvation new life this is salvation being born again anywhere you are stand up for that salvation now look up to Emmanuel and look up to Jesus who was born so that he will save his people from all their sin as you are standing up i'm going to pray with you but mean it in the depth of your heart you'll follow the lord from now on 
no more going back into transgression into sin into evil father in the mighty name of jesus our savior lord our emmanuel god with us i pray that you receive everyone that comes to you now in jesus name i pray that all the sins of the past all the transgressions of the past you wipe out you forgive them you set them free in jesus name I pray, Lord, that this salvation that comes into our heart by the grace of God and the salvation that teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present life, grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, you said you stand at the door and you knock. If anyone will open the door, you will come in with forgiveness and freedom and real salvation. You abide with them and stay with them. Lord, I pray that everyone will open the doors of their heart now. Come in unto them. Come in today. Come in to stay and come in to abide forever. Lord, grant them the assurance of salvation, the joy of salvation, the freedom that comes with salvation, and the victory that comes with salvation, that everyone will see them after this time, and they will know the grace of God has come into their heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another amen. amen. God bless you. Keep standing here and in every other location. Keep on standing. Our counselors will come to you now and um, they will take all those details from you. And um, the grace of God will abide in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We we'll call on our moderator tonight to help us with the counseling period, and then we'll come back. Every affliction then will be taken away from your body in Jesus' name. I want to congratulate every one of you making this decision to reconcile with God tonight. Our counselors are here with you just um, supply the information uh, in the slips given to you and return back to them. Know you that from tonight you are a new person, a child of God. So please be very accurate, right, and honest with the information you are supplying to um, the slips um, given to you. Our counselors will please uh, do uh, everything possible to spread that to yourself because of some of them who may be um, at the corner. Let's uh, do that uh, before uh, the miracle uh, prayer will come. So please um, uh, keep on standing, keep on standing. If uh, the counselors uh, are not yet around you, just keep on standing and uh, they will just come around. Please, our counselors, um, let's do that quickly. Don't just cluster uh, at a place. Reach out to them. Um, at the back, by my left, right, and front. Just supply the information as they are required in those uh, slips. Uh, like I said, be very accurate with them. The exact name you are called where you live, or if you have any other name, uh, the popular name, they know you better with. In the place you live, you can give that name so that it will not be difficult locating you after this time because we'll still reach out to you to share with you um, the love of God, uh, the goodness of God. Make sure you supply accurate information and write your names very legibly in such a way that we'll be able to uh, read them. Your cell phone numbers, um, supply them as well. And make sure they are correct. Make sure they are correct. Please, uh, counselors, as you receive uh, the slips uh, from them, 
check up before the, you, you release them that the phone numbers um, given or supplied in those slips are correct. Be sure. Keep on standing uh, until they come to you. Keep on, keep on standing, please. This is a great decision. A great decision. Taking you away from the path of darkness to the path of life and path of light. So please um, keep on standing until they reach where you are. And the other brethren who are sitting down, let's keep on praying. And if there's anybody who has stood up around you and nobody has um, attended to him or her, please um, reach out to the counselors or direct such a person to the counselors. Let's make sure everyone who has received the Lord tonight, who has accepted Christ as personal Lord and Savior, making a reconciliation with their God. Let's make sure we don't leave out anyone. Don't stand, don't uh, sit down until they have um, um, reason with you. Till have, they have collected your details, your name, the telephone number, and please don't forget the address. The address where you live. If there is no number or no street number, please uh, let's have uh, give a description of how we can reach you later. Even though you are giving us the slips with the telephone numbers. If there is a landmark by which we can locate you without the street numbers, please make sure you also give that. That's very important. If you have been attended to and released, you will just sit down and begin to look up to God because um, a father in the Lord is coming back to pray, to meet uh, us at the point of our challenges. Tonight, I'm sure by the grace of God, you are not going back the way, the same way you came because Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel is here. Saving. Emmanuel is here. Healing. Emmanuel is here. Delivering. Emmanuel is here. And because he's here, heaven is open. Blessings are going to come upon every one of us tonight. Just um, begin to pray. If you don't have any other thing you are doing, if you have given your name uh, to the counselors, just sit down quietly. And please, those of us at the far back that are moving here and there, please settle down, settle down. Nobody is moving away now. Nobody is moving away now. Settle down. Pray to the Lord. Begin to look up to God in prayer. Because our Father and the Lord is coming. And blessings will be poured out from heaven upon everyone. It's going to be a harvest of blessings. So please um, don't go away yet. Don't go away. This is the reason why we are here. Don't go away. Emmanuel is touching you tonight. You cannot go back the same. You cannot go back the same. In fact, heaven is made up that you will not be released to go the same way you came. That is what God is determined to do. He wouldn't release you. He's so merciful. He's so good. He's so loving. So kind that the same way you have come, believing him, he is not going to release you to go that same way. So please um, begin to talk to God, whether you are new or, or old, begin to talk to God. As far as you can identify a challenge in your life, begin to talk to God. So, uh, counselors, please, um, let's uh, try to be uh, uh, quick. Let's uh, be faster so that we can go on with the prayers. Like I said, don't sit down. If they have not reached where you are, keep on standing. Keep on standing. And if there's any brother or sister that is around you, please try to reach out to the counselors. Invite them to that place or you please try to all share or direct uh, such people to the counselors. The counselors can just move around to see if there are still uh, people standing unattended to. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. We don't expect anybody to move me down now except if you are a counselor. 
Don't expect movements search for those who are engaged in counseling. Like I said, make sure the details you are supplying are correct. Your name, your address, your phone number, and of course, a landmark close to the street where you live by which we can easily locate you. That was what we did many years ago. And it is to enable us as a church to still come to share further with you the love of God and the goodness of God. And please, let's not forget that the Believer's Banquet continues tomorrow by 2 p.m. at the back of Hall 1. If you don't know Hall 1, please, um, our brothers and sisters who are around you will uh, direct you. And uh, for both uh, those who uh, did this yesterday, you gave your life to Christ yesterday, you are also included, and those who are doing it today, very, very important fellowship. Make sure you are there. 2 p.m. tomorrow at the back of Hall 1. Yes, I can see people praying and looking up to God. That's, that's, that's the right thing to be doing at this time. If you have no other thing doing, if you are not a counselor, and if you are not a one of the converts, the right thing now, the right thing now, is to be looking up unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who will without fail tonight meet you at the point of your need as a brother, as a sister, a boy, girl, child, a family, a group of people, whatever be your need. Just begin to look up to God. Very soon, that hour was, will come. Please, uh, counselors, let's try to uh, be fast. And uh, in case um, we have an arrangement to give us a signal, if you are finished, let us um, please do that. I still want to say, if they have not uh, attended to you, keep on standing where you are. Keep on standing where you are. I must tell you that there is joy right now in heaven just because of you. There is joy right now. God, his son, the Holy Spirit, and the dwellers in heaven, the angels are rejoicing right now that a sinner is come home just because of you. What a wonderful experience. What a wonderful privilege that heaven right now is rejoicing because of you. While there is sorrow in the camp of the enemy and you cannot go back to that place. There is joy right now in heaven because of you. Think we should be rising up now on our feet as we expect the prayer of the servants of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody there, if you believe that your affliction will be taken away now, I said, Amen. Amen. The manifold grace and goodness for the afflicted. Any affliction, any sickness, any infirmity. The manifold grace and goodness of God is available right now. Amen. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He went about doing good. Healing all that were sick. All that were oppressed. All that were tormented of the devil. For God was with him. And he's here today. What he did yesterday, yesterday, yes, he'll do today. Amen. He will continue doing. Amen. And you are the candidate for miracle healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Raise up your hands for the healing, for the deliverance, for the redemption, and that goodness of God 
leads us to repentance. He loves us and he'll heal us. He will heal you. Amen. When you hear that final Amen at the mention of the name of Jesus, our Emmanuel, our healer, you know it's done. Amen. There will be testimony in your mouth. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Father, we well, thank you now. We we'll bless your name. You're always a good God, a merciful God. And your manifold grace and goodness abide forever. I'm asking, Lord, for everyone, everyone here, everyone online, everyone on the radio, everyone over the television there, everyone in every nation. Lord, I pray that your mighty power for healing will flow into every life now in Jesus' name. Every torment, every affliction, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every infirmity, I command, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, affliction will not remain on your people. Torment will not remain on your people. And all the demonic uh, things, affliction, everything is broken by the anointing right now in Jesus' name. We lift up the name of Jesus, the name of Emmanuel, the name of our healer. And we know everywhere his name is mentioned, there is healing. There's deliverance. There's total freedom. Total emancipation. Lord, touch every life. Walk in every life. Heal the sick right now. Deliver the oppressed right now. And set every captive free. And let all those afflictions in the body, any part of the body, internal, external, let every affliction be taken away in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has done it. He has taken your affliction away. Check up yourself. The miracle of God, the healing of the Lord is right there.